this episode is going to be about queer icons and horror. And by, what I mean by horror is, like, I don't just mean the film genre horror. I mean, like, the culture, the society, the, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start with number five, which is Carmilla, which is something that I know you know a lot about. But uh, for those who don't, let me educate you. So some, like, 20 years before Dracula was ever even a twinkle in Bram Stoker's creepy little eye, Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. Yes. <laughs> what a name. Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu gave us the steamy lesbian vampire story, Carmilla. Oh, bless. I read it after you did the episode of History of Fright on it. Mm -hmm. I read it for the first time, and I was like, oh, damn. Right, it's How good. is it allowed, too? Well, especially when you think of that era of literature. It was, as you said, it's a full 20, 25 years before Bram Stoker even sits down to write Dracula. So we yeah. know what kind of, like, Victorian-era puritanical viewpoints are going on at the time. Right, and, like, what's interesting is that, unfortunately, yes, this, like, iconic lesbian story was written by a man, but product of the times, baby. Not everyone can be Mary Shelley, and that's okay. Right. Um, and also... What I found to be interesting, and maybe this is a hot take, and maybe this is just me, but I, I, I only have my mouth, so I can only speak for me. But what Lafanu did was he didn't, he didn't write Carmilla from a female perspective, from what I understand. He he wrote a character, mm -hmm. and obviously her femininity was the apex of her appeal. But she was a monster, an aggressor. She was passionate and she was sensual. But at, at her core, she's a monster. Which I mean, not to be. Tw I'm. It's 2019, and I'm trying not to be sexist. But uh, to be to be honest, a man should write that role. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Right. Uh, that that kind of well. Here's and here's the thing too, which I don't actually know is if this is sexist, but from me, I'm trying not to hate men. Is right. my thing, I mean, same you know, every day. right? Yeah. You get it, like, cause I love men. I also, love, same every day. I love yeah. people, right? Okay, men are people too. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> get it together. Um, but I do find that she had a masculine energy that was kind that wasn't written as this is a woman with masculine energy. It was just this is a monster. This is a character, and right. this is her as a whole. And she felt very layered and. Um, unapologetic, which I find a lot with these like female monsters. You see a part of them that are that retreats and is like, oh, but my lady parts make me not want to murder you. And I saw none of that with Carmilla. Right, and I think that there is an argument to be made, and I'm, I'm sure that some scholars have have said that because of the cultural mores of the time, mm -hmm. and that Carmilla is so very clearly this bloodthirsty monster that by also casting her as a lesbian, it was some sort of commentary on what the state of homosexuality was at the time. But I don't necessarily feel like that's what Lefanu was doing. Uh, it's not that he wasn't doing that, mm -hmm. but I think what was more interesting about how Carmilla is presented is that it's sort of just a matter of her fact. She is this thing, she is this creature of the night who just happens to be drawn to women. It's not made a big deal out of which is very, very rare in that kind of literature uh, to just all of a sudden be like, yeah, and I am this beautiful maiden of the night who is just so happens to be interested in the young ladies. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and the what the um, it's funny because the message wasn't like, oh my goodness, lady love. The message was you've corrupted this young woman. Right. Um, which is not a gendered action at all no if anything is culturally uh kind of rooted of, at, at the time it was more about this notion of virtue yes and the idea that like women had to be you know their their maiden head had to be protected at all costs but it didn't really seem to have a lot to do with the fact that it was being taken by another woman it was mm -hmm. more so just that was that was the thing. We must protect the virtue of our girls. It's yeah. what's I, what I love about it too is that the, it didn't. Oh God, I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to put it into language because it was it was during this Victorian time where the rules were so rigid and the roles were so strict and like you you stayed to your roles completely and then this thing comes out that completely challenges that and gives so much power to women right. and gives so much power but from woman to woman too because like not only was it like 
obviously, like Carmilla, I don't. It's bad that I don't remember the other woman's name. I don't know, but I'm having her on the spot. No. What? Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad that we're on the same yeah. page. Whatever, guys. Um, we're not perfect, but uh, no, it's it, the fight is between them, right? And the duty is between woman to woman, and so to give a woman that much power in the 19th century, in the late 1800s, is wild to me, and. It's just like I, I can't stop thinking about the fact that like mm-hmm. if women had read that and saw that as powerful as opposed to shameful, right? Imagine if they if they could have just harnessed the power of that pussy in 1871. Right. Imagine where we would be now. Carmilla tried. Well, Carmilla tried, but and I think that what's really great about this particular work is how foundational it is. Mm. Uh, and I think that. Um, Carmilla also proved that even when you're trying to utilize horror and darkness, the sort of vilified aspects of certain things, we're drawn to it. Right. People were obsessed with this book in such a way that Bram Stoker reads it and was like, I too want to write a vampire novel. And a lot of the early tropes of of, uh, Dracula come from Stoker being a fanboy of Carmilla. And what people don't realize this is sort of like the hidden queer history of horror is that things that we take for granted as just kind of like foundational bedrock of the genre a lot of them have queer beginnings because it's usually that sense of otherness that pushes the boundary that catches the attention of an audience modern vampirism as it is presented in fiction would not exist without a lesbian and that to me is amazing like we attribute it to dracula but dracula doesn't exist without carmilla so ipso facto you got to have your sapphic sister first before we get the count. And no, no disrespecting what he did. He's got his sure. place. But you yeah, know. that made that just made me emotional. That just <laughs> made me like tear up 